Good day, my dear students. You are here to learn how to illustrate the probability of the union of two events, which is denoted by this symbol. Read as the probability of A union B. Let's begin this episode with activity 1. Suppose there are 11 balls numbered 1 to 11 inside a bowl, determine the outcomes of the following events. A. Getting an even number. B. Getting a number divisible by 3. C. Getting an even number and a number divisible by 3. And D. Getting an even number or a number divisible by 3. I'm giving you 10 seconds to think about it. Okay, let's now determine the outcomes for each event. For event A, the outcomes are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 because these are the even numbers from 1 to 11. For event B, the outcomes are 3, 6, and 9 because these numbers can be divided exactly by 3. While for event C, the outcome is 6 because 6 is the only even number from 1 to 11 that is also a multiple of 3. And lastly, for event D, the outcomes are 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10 because they are the numbers that are either even or divisible by 3. Now, which of these four events shows an intersection of two events? Correct. That is event C because it contains the element 6, which is the common element of the events A and B. Remember that the intersection of two events is a new event that contains all of the common outcomes in the two events. It is associated with the word end. What about the event that shows union of two events? Very good. That is event D because we combine all of the outcomes of the two events A and B. Always remember that the union of two events is a new event that contains all of the outcomes that are in at least one of the two events. It is associated with the word OR. So take note that in the study of sets, the word END means intersection while the word OR means union. In this case, if we name the event of getting an even number as event A and the event of getting a number divisible by 3 as event B, then we can name the third event as A, intersection B, and the fourth event as A, union B. Now that we have formally named these four events, let's determine their cardinalities. Event A has five outcomes, so the cardinality of A is 5. Event B has three outcomes, so the cardinality of B is 3. The cardinality of A intersection B is 1, while the cardinality of A union B is 7. Notice that the cardinality of an event is just the number of outcomes in that event. But let's talk about the experiment. How many possible outcomes are there in picking a ball? Since there are 11 balls which are numbered 1 to 11, there are 11 possible outcomes when you pick a ball. This set of outcomes is called the sample space denoted by S, and the cardinality of this sample space is 11. Do not forget that when we say sample space, it contains all of the possible outcomes in an experiment taken together. These cardinalities are very important in getting their probabilities. Now what is the probability of each event? Take a look at these illustrative examples. To get the probability of A, we will get the ratio of the cardinality of A and the cardinality of S. Looking back, the cardinality of A is 5 and the cardinality of S is 11. So we have 5 over 11. To get the probability of B, it will be the ratio of cardinality of B, which is 3, and the cardinality of S, which is 11. So we have 3 
over 11. The probability of A intersection B is the cardinality of A intersection B over the cardinality of S. Therefore, we have 1 over 11. Finally, to get the probability of A union B, we will also get the ratio of cardinality of A union B and the cardinality of S, and that is 7 over 11. Now, let's consider their probabilities. The probability of A is 5 over 11. The probability of B is 3 over 11. The probability of A intersection B is 1 over 11. And the probability of A union B is 7 over 11. Can you find a relationship among the first three probabilities that may lead to the probability of A union B? Look closely. How do you think we can get the probability of A union B using the probabilities of A, B, and A intersection B? Notice that when you add 5 over 11 and 3 over 11, we will get 8 over 11. And when you subtract 1 over 11 from their sum, the result is 7 over 11. With that, we can say that the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A union B. In fact, this is the general rule of the probability of the union of two events. I repeat, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So now, let us have example number one. Illustrate the probability of the union of two events using the general rule in the Venn diagram given that the probability of H is 0 0.7, the probability of T is 0 0.5, the probability of H intersection T is 0 0.3. Now the general rule is, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Hence for this problem, we can illustrate the probability of H union T as the probability of H plus the probability of T minus the probability of H intersection T. Substituting the given to this equation, we can further illustrate it as 0 0.7 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. 0 0.7 plus 0 0.5 is 1.2. Then 1.2 minus 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.9. Therefore, the probability of H union T is 0 0.9. We now illustrate the probability of their union using the Venn diagram. We start by drawing a rectangle and two intersecting circles, which will represent the probability of H and the probability of T. We have three regions inside the two circles, the blue, the green, and the yellow region. We start at the green region. What do you think must be written in this region? We actually write in here the probability of the intersection of H and T, and that is 0 0.3. What about in the blue region? Do we write 0 0.7? No. Remember that the probability of H is represented by the whole circle. If we put there 0 0.7, then we will have to add it to 0 0.3, and that is equal to 1.0. And that is not the probability of H. So what must be done? Very good. For the blue region, we will subtract 0 0.3 from 0 0.7. That is equal to 0 0.4. Let's proceed to the yellow region. What must be the probability here? Correct. It is the difference of 0 0.5 and 0 0.3. That is 0 0.2. Now that we have completed all the probabilities in the three regions, let's get the probability of H union T. To do this, 
just get the sum of all the probabilities inside the two circles. So that will be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2. 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.9. Notice that even if we use the general rule or the Venn diagram to illustrate the probability of their union, we arrive at the same value. Now let's proceed to example number 2. 110 grade 10 students of Tobacco National High School are interviewed if they are willing to join either Chess C or Mobile Legends M in the upcoming Virtual Sports Fest. Shown below is the result of the survey. There are 55 who are willing to join chess, 44 in the Mobile Legends, and 33 in both chess and Mobile Legends. Illustrate the probability of the union of two events using the general rule and the Venn diagram. Now before we get so excited to use the general rule, let us first determine the probabilities of these events. To do that, we get their cardinalities. The cardinality of the sample space S is 110 because there are 110 students who are interviewed. The cardinality of C is 55, the cardinality of M is 44, and the cardinality of C intersection M is 33. With this, we can say that the probability of C is 55 over 110. The probability of M is 44 over 110. And the probability of C intersection M is 33 over 110. Now we use the general rule to illustrate the probability of their union. The probability of C union M is equal to the probability of C plus the probability of M minus the probability of C intersection M. Substituting the known values to the rule, we have 55 over 110 plus 44 over 110 minus 33 over 110. Simplifying, we will get 99 over 110 minus 33 over 110. 99 over 110 minus 33 over 110 is 66 over 110. We can simplify further this fraction by dividing it by 22 over 22. So finally, the probability of C union M is equal to 3 over 5. Now let's illustrate this also using the Venn diagram. Given the probabilities, let's draw a rectangle with two intersecting circles inside it. For convenience, we start filling in the green region which represents the probability of the intersection of C and M. We write 33 over 110. In the blue region, we will subtract 33 over 110 from 55 over 110, and that is 22 over 110. In the yellow region, we will subtract 33 over 110 from 44 over 110. The answer is 11 over 110. To get the probability of their union, add all the probabilities in these three regions. We now have 22 over 110 plus 33 over 110 plus 11 over 110. Adding the numerators, we will get 66. Copy the common denominator, which is 110. Expressing it in the lowest term, the final answer is 3 over 5. Again, notice that we arrive at the same probability whether we use the general rule or the Venn diagram. So always remember the following. Number one, an event E in general consists of one or more outcomes. If each of these outcomes is equally likely to occur, then the probability of E is equal to the number of outcomes in the event over the number of outcomes in the sample space. And number two, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B.